Good morning, Uniontown United Methodist Church. It is so good to see everyone out and about this morning. It is a beautiful summer morning. Uh, what a gorgeous day yesterday was, and today is looking to be beautiful. I pray you get a chance to get outside and enjoy it today. After service, of course, don't run out during service, <laughs> but I'm so glad to see all of you here. Uh, whether you're joining us online or in person, I pray this morning that the Spirit of God would fill you and that you would come with joy and with thanksgiving to the throne of the Lord this morning. Welcome to worship. Good morning. Just have two announcements this morning. First and foremost, we want to wish a few folks some happy birthdays this week. Um, Steve Weber, whose birthday was yesterday, happy birthday. Bob Monteith will be celebrating on Thursday. And today is Don Baker's birthday. So happy birthday. I don't see Don here. Otherwise, I'd play happy birthday for him. But uh, happy birthday to everybody. Um, the other announcement is this Tuesday, um, Clearview is having their monthly uh, dinner. So Tuesday from 4 to 6 p.m., if you would like a meal, go ahead and join them. They also would like some help. So if you have uh, some free time, um, they are doing this on, on Tuesday from 4 to 6 p.m. And if you're interested at all uh, in helping them, whether it be clean up or helping set up or anything like that, they're operating from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, Martha Hilborn is the point of contact over at Clearview. And it sounds like they're going to have some good lasagna. So if you like lasagna, uh, show up at Clearview. They're, they'd appreciate your attendance. Thank you very much. Would you join me in the worship blessing this morning? ahead. And now the prelude. be reading the opening prayer. Loving God, you tell us it is enough for us to be like you, yet we are overwhelmed and discouraged by the injustice that surrounds us and our seeming inability to do anything about it. How are we supposed to be like you, all-powerful God, when we feel so powerless? God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You tell us not to fear those who can kill the body, 
but not the soul. Yet the violence in the world threatens to deaden our hearts, and that scares us. How are we supposed to resist fear when threats seem to abound on all sides? God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You tell us we are of more value than sparrows, yet we notice so many in our neighborhoods and our world who are treated as less than human, even less than a sparrow. How are we supposed to restore dignity to all those whom the Lord has devalued? God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You tell us to tell in the light what we receive in the dark, to shout from the rooftops what is it is whispered in secret. In the face of the world's suffering, violence, and despair, whisper in our hearts that we learn to grow as your disciples, who declare in the light the love and the goodness of God with our voices and our lives. Amen. <coughs> Please stand for the call to worship. People of God, tell it. We are not alone. We are children of God. People of Christ, tell it. The light has come in love and truth, teaching us to live in the light. People of the Spirit, tell it. The spirit of truth reveals hidden things, offering healing through honest confession. People of God, tell it. We are not alone. We are children of God. Amen. this morning as we come before the Lord and with our church family this morning. What joys and prayer concerns do you have to share? Miss Linda. The hip is feeling better. Yes, absolutely. We're really, really glad. Those weeds, I'm telling you, you got to watch out for them. Whew. Um, I have one um, for Marty Matheny. His sister, Tanya Johnson, passed away last week from pancreatic cancer at the age of 61. So we need to be remembering the Matheny's in our prayers. Uh, what else? Yes. I was with my next door neighbor, wonderful, wonderful lady, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Her name is Luna. Okay. L-U-D-N-A. I was with her when she learned that her sister had just died. Oh, okay. So prayers for the family, please. Okay. 
Lubna's sister passed away yesterday. All right. All right, what else do we have? I saw more, another hand. Yes, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Wonderful. Twelfth birthday. One more year till the big teenage. Oh, goodness. All right. Yes. Wonderful. Yay. Congratulations. And we have missed you, and we're so glad to see you, Sherry. What else do we have today? Oh, in the back. All right. Hi, Miss Cindy. Okay. Oh, goodness. This is the third time around with it? Oh, goodness. Okay. Definitely. I'm going to get that knee of yours to behave, Barry. <clears throat> All right. What else do we have this morning? Anything else? Oh, go ahead. Excellent, excellent. We're glad your grandma's doing better. I also thank you for prayers for my mom. She's had a pretty outstanding week this week, so we are grateful for all the prayers for her as well. All right. If there are no more this morning, let's go ahead and join in our prayer hymn, hymn number 174, His Name is Wonderful. Jesus, your name is wonderful. We could praise you every minute of every day for our entire lives, and it would never be enough. For the blessings you give, for the mercy you bestow, for the, give, for the forgiveness that you have brought into our lives. Your name is wonderful. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for the beautiful sunshine and the warm summer weather, for the flowers that grow and the rain that falls. We thank you for the breath that you've put into our lungs today. 
We thank you for this time to be separate from the world, to just breathe in you. We ask as we come before you this morning that your spirit would fill us, that you would fill this place with your goodness, with your majesty. Lord, that you would remind us that you are our sovereign father, that you are the Lord of all creation. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are where our hope is born and where we have eternal life. And Lord, as we come before you this morning, we know you have heard those that we have lifted up to you. Lord, things we've lifted up in praise and thanksgiving. Lord, for hips that feel better, for birthdays, for all of the goodness, Lord, that overflows in our lives. We are thankful. And for those, Lord, that just need your mercy and that need your healing and that need your reminder that you are in control even when the world feels out of control. Lord, we lift them up to you. We ask for your comfort we ask for your peace. We ask that your spirit would just pour over them whatever it is their hearts and their souls need. And Lord, as we come before you this morning, we thank you for this time. We thank you for each other. We thank you for this place that you've given us to come to worship your holy name. But more than anything, we thank you for Jesus, who we love and who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The first scripture reading today is Psalm 86. Hear me, Lord, and answer me. For I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength on behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Let us sing, sing the first to the third verses of the summons. <laughs> Thank you. 
second scripture for the morning, if you would like to follow along, can be found in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. Hear the word of the Lord. Students are not greater than their teacher, and slaves are not greater than their master. Students are to be like their teacher, and slaves are to be like their master. And since I, the master of the household, have been called the prince of demons, the members of my household will be called even worse names. But don't be afraid of those who threaten you. For the time is coming when everything that is covered will be revealed, and all that is secret will be made known to all. What I tell you now in the darkness, shout abroad when daybreak comes. What I whisper in your ear, shout from the housetops for all to hear. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God, who can destroy both soul and body in hell. What is the price of two sparrows? One copper coin? But not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. And the very hairs on your head are numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Your enemies will be right in your own household. If you love your father or mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. Or if you love your son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. When I was younger, I was terrified of the dark. When it was time for bed, I remember my mom would put me in bed. She'd tuck me in. She'd sit beside me and read me a story for a bit. And she'd sit there until she thought I was asleep. And then she would slip out of the room. If I wasn't asleep, I would wait quietly for her to get ready for bed. And then when she would go to bed and I would hear her start to snore, I would take all of my bedding into her room and I would lay it beside her side of the bed and I would make myself a bed on the floor. I, there was something so comforting about just being able to reach my hand up and touch her. Because even if she didn't know I was there, I knew that she was there. And that made me feel really, really safe. But when it was time for me to learn to honestly sleep in my room by myself, my poor parents tried everything. They were tired of getting out of bed and tripping over the kid that was laying on the floor with her blankets, and they just had enough. So they, they really tried everything. Night lights in my room, hall lights on, new stuffed animals, music. If you can think of it, they probably tried it to get me to stay in my room. But I can tell you what finally worked for me. My Aunt Vicki used to do macrame. Do any of you ever do macrame? But, okay. Well, she made the sweetest macrame owl, and it was sitting perched on a branch. It was an ivory owl, and it had great big giant brown beads for eyes, I remember, and the sweetest little face. My aunt took me aside one day, and she told me that this owl was very special because it guarded children and it kept them safe. I don't know where she came up with the idea. Pinterest wasn't a thing yet, and you couldn't just Google ways to keep the kids in bed. So not to date myself at how old I am, but it was before the internet was really popular. So um, anyway, she told me owls stay awake all night long, and that that owl was specially there to watch over me all night long and to protect me. 
So she took me into my room and she hung that owl right by my door that overlooked my bed. And that night, I slept in my own room. And the next night, and the next, and the next. That owl hung on my wall until I was a teenager and started to plaster my walls from top to bottom with new kids on the block posters. It's a true story. I'm a little ashamed now to admit it, but it happened. So. But my aunt had really gotten to the heart of my fear, and she found a way to make me feel safe. You see, it wasn't just the dark that I didn't like. It was the uncertainty of what was in the dark that really scared me. I was worried about what might be coming. I was afraid of the normal kid things, monsters under my bed, monsters in my closet, you know, and I wanted the assurance that someone was keeping me safe. With that macrame owl hanging on my wall, I felt watched over, I felt protected, and I knew that someone was taking care of me while I was asleep. It was kind of a genius move on her part. Our scripture text today is the continuation from my last sermon. Don't worry, there won't be any quizzes. I won't ask you if you remember what I preached on last time. Jesus had just told his disciples that he was going to send them out to the people of Israel. And that he was going to send them with nothing. No food, no money, no extra clothes, not even a walking stick. You remember. They were really going to have to just rely on God alone to provide for them. And he told them that they were to expect some incredibly rough things ahead. So Jesus spends the first half of this chapter giving them some really scary, hard facts about what the future was going to hold for them. And he ends the chapter with even more things that are difficult to hear. Who in the world wants to hear the phrase, um, let's see, if you love your father or mother more than me, you're not worthy of being mine. They were really hard things that Jesus was telling them. But right in the middle of this chapter, right in the middle of all of these hard truths that Jesus is preparing his followers for, Jesus gives them hope. And he reminds them of the almighty God that is watching over them and going with them. The God who sees them and who knows them and who will never abandon them. Because let's be honest with one another, Jesus has told his disciples they're going to be facing really hard situations. He doesn't sugarcoat the danger that they're going to face or the cost of what it will um, cost them to be his disciples. He does not tell them that the road is going to be easy because, let's face it, it won't be easy. But hear these words from the mouth of our Savior, words he spoke to the disciples all those generations ago, but words he still offers to you and I today. But don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. For some of us in this room, fear is a very real companion. It was for the disciples as well. Jesus knew that, and that's why he takes the time to stop and to remind them that he is the answer to calming their fears. Jesus is their master. He's their teacher. He's the one that they trust. But they were still afraid. We are all afraid of things that are unknown. But Jesus doesn't get angry for us when we feel afraid. Think of the times in the Gospels when the disciples were in over their heads. We see it here as they're getting ready to be sent out. We see it when they're caught in the storm on the Sea of Galilee. We see it when Jesus tells them to feed the 5,000 men plus women and children, and they have no idea where that food is going to come from. We see it when they can't cast out a demonic spirit. We see it when they follow Jesus to Bethsaida to raise Lazarus from the dead. They fear for his life and for their own. We see it. When they run away, when Jesus is arrested and tried and crucified. These real, honest-to-goodness human beings experienced real, honest-to-goodness fear. And each time that fear took hold of them, Jesus had to remind them that he was there. 
John 4.18 says this, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear. 1 John 4.8 says this, But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And 1 John 4.18, We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love. Jesus Christ is God, and God is love. God is perfect love. God does not just love us, but the very nature of who God is, is love. It's not just a characteristic that we use to describe how God can feel or how God can act. When we say that God is love, we mean his nature is perfect love. Love that casts out fear. Jesus is reminding his followers that the world is about to throw many things at them that will cause them to be afraid. But in only a few sentences, Jesus tells his disciples three times, but don't be afraid. It doesn't take much imagination to picture the disciples sitting in a room with Jesus, listening to what he's telling them is about to happen. He can see the fear and anxiety growing in their eyes, and perhaps he stands up as he speaks to them, and he begins to walk around the room. He can feel that they're afraid. He can hear their anxious thoughts. So he lowers his voice, and he says to them, with nothing but love for them, don't be afraid of those who threaten you. For the time is coming when everything that is covered will be revealed and all that is secret will be made known to all. What I tell you now in the darkness, shout abroad when the daybreak comes. What I whisper in your ear, shout from the housetops for all to hear. Don't be afraid of those who can kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. What is the price of two sparrows? One copper coin? Not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. You can almost see him put his hand on their shoulders as he passes by each of them. And you can almost see him look in their eyes as he says, don't be afraid. He means it. He tells them, what I tell you in the darkness, tell in the light. He will be in the darkness with them going through all of it with them, guiding them and strengthening them and giving them courage and hope and the words that they need to speak. No matter what comes at them, their souls are safe with God and they should fear no one other than God. As he speaks these words to his followers, he knows that he too is about ready to walk through the hardest time of his life. And he's not asking them to go through anything that he will not endure a thousandfold. He reminds them nothing happens that God does not know about. He sees the sparrow and not even one of them falls without God knowing that. God even knows the hairs on your head. God knows us intimately. You don't even know yourself as well as God knows you. God knows the innermost depths of who you are. He knows your thoughts and your emotions. He knows what brings you great joy, and he knows what triggers your anger and your frustration. God's spirit dwells within you. Jesus knew the Spirit was at work in his followers, and the work of the Spirit in these believers was going to help spread the truth of the gospel and bring the hope of the coming kingdom around the world. 
The spirit that dwells inside of you as a believer is the same powerful Holy Spirit that inspired the apostles to do great and miraculous things for God. And you and I are called by Christ to do the same work that the disciples were called to do. We're called to tell in the daylight what Christ has told us in the darkness. We're called to shout from the rooftops what Christ has whispered into our hearts. But what in the world does that mean? Let me tell you what I think it means. Each and every single one of you sitting in this room today has been through some things in life. Can I get an amen? (laughs) Some really hard things. Dreams that never panned out. Marriages that didn't last. Deaths of spouses and parents, children, friends. We've had financial struggles, sins that wanted to bury us, health struggles, battles with mental illness, anxiety, depression. The list could go on and on with the struggles that we have faced in life. We've all seen more than our fair share of struggle and strife this side of heaven. But look around you. I actually mean that. Look around you. Look at the people that sit in the pews next to you. Think about the saints that used to sit in these pews next to you. Think about how their lives reflect the love, the grace, the mercy, compassion, humbleness, the strength of Jesus Christ. And think about the lessons you have learned from their life. In some of the darkest times of life, we see God's faithfulness shine the brightest. Think about all of those impossible situations that God has already brought you through. Things you thought you could never survive. For me, for you, do we have the scars from battle? You bet we do. Are we weary from some of those battles? You bet we are. But have we seen the goodness of God despite the ugliness of battle? You bet. No one likes to struggle or to go through hard times, but it's often those hardest fought battles of life where we learn the most about who God is and how hard God fights for us. It's when, like Daniel, we're thrown into the pit with the lions that we see God's fierce protection of us. It's when, like David, we're toe-to-toe with that giant that we see God's strength at work in our battles. It's when we're marching around the impenetrable walls of Jericho and they finally fall that we see how God can really do impossible things. It's when, like Noah, we build a boat before it's rained even one drop and we see the provision of our God. It's like when Job has lost all things except our faith that we see God restore and bless us greatly. It's when, like the disciples, we obey in faith despite the fear that we feel when we see God move mountains. When I was a little girl laying in my bed, afraid of make-believe monsters, I had no idea there would be real-life monsters that were going to be headed my way. Let's call them grown-up fears. Infertility, divorce, death, being a single parent. But none of those things took my God by surprise. And he had me covered before I even knew I needed to be covered. God will cover you. God will cover his church. But we need to be a faithful people. We need to be faithful in prayer. We need to be faithful in serving the Lord, in reading our Bibles, in studying his word, in being in fellowship not only with one another, but with all of those around us. We need to be faithful in our witness to the world, in our encouragement of one another, in our willingness to be the church of Jesus Christ. 
It's not going to be easy. But God has called us to tell in the light what he has shown us in the darkness. We are meant to shout from the rooftops what he's whispered in our ears. That requires us to listen to God. It requires us to listen for those whispers. It requires us to be a faithful people. Amen. ushers please come forward <laughs> thank you as we come to worship today we come bringing our best and offer it to the one we love the most and blessings. The ledger of our lives is so overwhelmed with your goodness that we struggle with how small our offerings to you seem in comparison. The gospel reminds us that not even the smallest act of mercy and compassion, a cup of cold water, will go unnoticed by you. Give us the eyes to see those in needs the ears to hear those who cry for justice, and the hearts to comfort those hurting and grieving. If we all were to offer a cup of cold water, the world would be flooded with compassion. We ask this in Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please remain standing for our final hymn, which is number 338, Where He Leads Me.
leads me, I will follow. I will follow in joy. I will follow when I'm afraid. I will follow wherever he leads me. I pray that this is our prayer today and every day. He will never leave you. He will never abandon you. Do not be afraid. Go in peace. Amen.